Hi everybody and welcome to our latest in the HDO uh, webinar series. We are really excited today to be joined by Jamie Levy um, of CHDI who's going to talk to us today about Enroll HD. Um, as always, if anybody has any questions, there's a chat function on the webinar link which is down on the bottom left of your screen. Um, or alternatively, you can email us at info at hdyo.org and we'll be able to come back to you with any uh, questions that you've got and get your answers to them. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to hand over to you and I'm going to shut up. Thanks, Kat. Welcome and thank you everyone for listening to our presentation on Enroll HD, a worldwide observational study and research platform for HD families. So let's go back to the basics. What is Enroll? It's a global research platform which aims to speed up progress within clinical trials, understand more about Huntington's disease, and improve care. Building the platform takes a lot of input from HD families, the study sites, our governance committees, our staff, CHDI, and the patient advocacy associations around the globe. Together, these contributions enable a dynamic infrastructure to support and develop a host of platform researches and resources and services. Most importantly, it allows us to meet our objectives and achieve our goals. So what are these goals? It is to, one, improve the design and expedite the recruitment and execution of clinical studies and trials. Two, to, for research, improving our understanding of HD and identify factors that influence disease progression. And three, the care, to foster the good clinical care and help improve the health of people with Huntington's disease. So who participates? Enroll HD is a family study. We allow companions and caregivers, gene positive, both manifest and pre-manifest, gene status unknown, which we also call the at risk, and gene negative. Many sites do not recruit community controls. This is an exception for those sites that are also participating in HD Clarity, which is a CSF collection study, which is launched off of the Enroll platform. So what is involved in an Enroll HD visit? There are annual visits. The PI and their staff will ask questions about your health, medical history, thinking, behaviors, um, cognition, your memory, executive function, your lifestyle, conduct a neurological exam. Um, that's all part of the core, which you see up in the left-hand corner there. This, of course, is following informed consent, where you will be completely informed of what the study entails. Then there's an extended portion of the battery, which we ask people to participate in if they'd like to. And then there are optional components, like the additional biosamples and family history, and very importantly, linking to other study data that you may part for other studies that you participate in. What does Enroll HD collect? A common set of information for all participants across all sites around the world, blood samples for research purposes, and then all the data and samples are coded and available to share with researchers to investigate important questions about HD. Data sharing is a key feature in Enroll HD. It's essential to developing HD therapeutics. The coded clinical data and biosamples are made available to researchers through a very straightforward process on the Enroll website, and it encourages a broad variety of ideas and projects. This gives you a little schematic of how the data is coded and then recoded. It's a one-way algorithm. The site will ask you for your some specific information, like your first name and last name, your mother's maiden name, your place of birth. And then it gets converted through this algorithm into a nine-digit HDID, which stands for Huntington's Disease Identifier. And that's how we gather the information at site. But then before that information goes out to researchers, it's coded, it's recoded. So it's almost impossible, except if you are a professional at these types of um, situations, being able to identify. We keep a very strong firewall between the enrolled study sites and the enrolled data, as I just explained. So it's virtually impossible to link the data that's going out to research back to somebody's identity. 
we thought that's one of our strongest philosophies at CHDI in the enrolled platform to protect the identity of the participants. So this data is truly driving research. We've now had four periodic data sets. The PDS stands for periodic data set. The first one back in 2014 had 1,500 data sets. The most recent one at the end of 2018 had over 15,000 data sets of participants with up to seven enrolled visits. And the PDS has been don downloaded to date over 230 times for the purpose of Huntington's disease research and development. Some of the studies include genetic association studies, uh, behavioral assessment studies, age of onset studies. Our philosophy is to make the access, access as easy as possible so as many HD researchers can work on the data and the samples, again, with the identity protected. So the Enroll HD platform is truly unique. It serves the HD community. It's global. It's fully integrated. It's large scale, actively monitored, and diversified. To give you an idea of how the Enroll HD platform supports other studies, this is a slide showing all the various studies that are using the Enroll platform, either in the minimalist way or using it for almost every part of their study. We have the neuroimaging studies that are conducted at CHDI that benefit from the platform. We have the biosample collections like HD Clarity that I referred to earlier, which is the CSF collection. And then in the middle there, you see all of the sponsors, the commercial sponsors of HD studies that have in one way or another used the Enroll HD platform for to help them recruit or to help them start up their clinical studies. Um, there are very, varying levels of support. Some use all, some use one or two. For example, just the use of the HDID, which I showed you earlier. Some may just use it for lists of potentially eligible participants for their study, those participants that may mean meet the inclusion or the exclusion criteria. These are some of the services the Enroll HD platform supports study feasibility, site feasibility, eligible participant listings, on-site monitoring, training of the sites, study site management, the HDID provision, um, just use of the EDC that we use in the enroll study. We open it for other studies. We share our SOPs and our guidelines. And of course, we share the samples, which really provides a very important element for HD research. So this gives you an idea of how the eligible, how the database in Enroll has helped recruitment in three previous clinical trials that are no longer active over the last five years. In order to come up with approximately 800 participants in three concurrent clinical trials, it required a total amount of enrolled participants of 8,000. So it looks like an eight, a 10 to 1 ratio. That gives you an idea of why it's so important to participate and enroll so that this database is available for the recruitment of clinical trials. Improving clinical care is the third objective of enroll and just as important as the other two. It allows the staff both on site and our staff internally at the Enroll platform to identify best practices across the Enroll study sites and work to ensure that standard of care is provided to HD families. It also provides an HD training portal, which is a centralized website that contains all training documents, videos, and references needed for certain assessment certifications required for Enroll HD. We will be continuing to develop the HD training platform portal as we go forward for sites as well as um, raters that are involved on the sites. And even just for training outside of Enroll, we, we offer that to residents that are in neurological training that are working on HD. But we have, I think, a couple of thousand participants or, or people that have trained on the motor training portal to date. So how big is Enroll become? We started Enroll in 2012. This gives you a snapshot of where we are as of June 1st. There are 19 active countries. There are 163 actively recruiting sites in Enroll. 
To date, there are over 21,500 total participants recruited. This differs from active participants recruited, which is 18,500. And then the number of total baseline and follow-up visits together are greater than 54,000. We have 60% participation from Europe, another 35% from North America, um, about 4% from Australasia, and 1% from Latin America. This shows a, a, a similar depiction in a different way. You have, again, over 18,000 participants on the left, and it doesn't really show to scale, but we do have over 54,000 uh, visits to date, and that's a collection of both the baseline and the follow-up visits. The future is now for Enroll. What are we doing? We're evolving the strategy. And the goal is to increase the recruitment of at-risk, pre-manifest, and early-stage participants. Why are we doing that? Because as we all know, the HD is a progressive disorder, and we'd like to be able to see what's happening before people are diagnosed, or before the onset of the disease, or before the disease is diagnosed. So it's really helpful to have annual data, annual visits from people that don't have the disease, but have tested positive for the gene or don't even know their genetic status, it's unknown, but you as a participant would like to do something but are not yet ready or don't want to know what your genetic status is, and we accept that. So we would like you to consider participating and enroll even if you don't know your genetic status. It's not necessary for enroll. So the second thing we're doing is transitioning current participants that are at more advanced stages of the um, of the disease to an easier and a less burdensome protocol, Enroll Light. We're not there yet. I'll go a little bit further into detail later on in this presentation on what we're doing to get us to the point of launching the Enroll Light protocol. And the third thing we're doing, which I know that from participation in previous um, patient advocacy meetings and the HDSA conventions, that the people that are from HD families are really eager to get involved in self-enroll, which is utilizing mobile health applications to accommodate younger working and remote participants. So effectively, and hopefully, people will not have to come into clinic, and they can participate in a scaled-down digital assessment, which I'll talk about in a moment. So how has our recruitment strategy worked so far? We went to sites, we announced this new strategy back at the end of 2017 and then launched um, communication strategy directly to the Enroll sites and then at the Enroll Congress back in May of 2018. So for the last, I'd say, about 18 months, we've been communicating to the sites and to the community why it's important to recruit people that are pre-manifest, at risk, or at early manifest. And here's what's happened just with the communication strategy. Before 2018, the, um, if you look at the yellow here, it's the pre-manifest, and this is self-declared pre-manifest, people that have been tested, was at almost 18%. And then if we look at the baseline visits after January 1st, 2018, it's already past 23%. So we've moved the needle on the recruitment to earlier stages and pre to pre-manifest up almost five percentage points, which is excellent. And we're hoping that will continue as we move forward. So the recruitment strategies, as I mentioned, we did reach out to the sites and continue to do that to give them ideas of how they can implement new recruitment practices. And those, re those recruitment strategies are, are really quite straightforward and simple. It's, it's as easy as including genetic counseling centers, um, embedding them in the clinic, or just linking up the, the genetic testing and counseling centers to the enrolled study sites, because often the study sites focus on neurology or psychiatry, and we're, we've reached out to the sites to have them hook up with the genetic testing and counseling. And we actually would be happy to know that actually 85% of our study sites based on a survey response, are already affiliating and including the genetic testing and counseling centers in the enrolled study or in their clinic. 
Um, the other thing we're doing is reaching out to the participants through the groups like HDO, who act as ambassadors for Enroll HD, and are more fluid in using the social media to communicate and disseminate information about the research and opportunities like Enroll HD. Enroll HD needs your support. We know that everybody's excited about the clinical trials, the big, the home run trials like the Roche trial and WAVE that are the first disease modifying trials that are being tested, but only a handful of people can be involved in those studies. For everyone else, we really implore you to consider being involved in the observational studies like Enroll HD, like HD Clarity. There are a number of smaller studies that are being conducted as part of Enroll and even apart, even locally, that have nothing to do with, for, with Enroll. It's important that people get involved. If you're interested in research, reach out to be part of an observational study like Enroll or like Clarity because your data is so you know, it's precious, it's valuable, it's, it's of use to all the sponsors that are presently working on protocols for the future. So it's really important, and again, I'm going to emphasize it's really important to get more people that are at risk or pre-manifest involved in the observational studies like Enroll, and would really like you to seriously consider that. So the, the next um, objective of the new strategy is to launch self-enroll. We're still, it's still under um, discussion, uh, development. We're working with some of the commercial sponsors on what they're doing to reach out to the community to conduct a digital assessment battery. We hope to launch that very soon as part of Enroll under the title Self-Enroll, we think. It'll be easy to use, not burdensome. And because it's digital, it'll be more sensitive to measuring pre-manifest symptoms and disease progression that people you can't see, you know, to the, to the naked eye. You can't see any symptoms, but perhaps with a digital assessment, it'll be, it'll pick up those, those types of signs that we're unable to assess visually with the human eye. Um, it'll be a comp comp comprehensive and validated for Huntington's disease. It also guarantees the collection of objective data in remote environments, and it will be able to tie it to the data already gathered in Enroll, and we're hoping it'll expand the data collection earlier and earlier and allow these more sensitive assessments to be tied to the Enroll data. So I discussed this briefly, the Enroll Light, which we're just developing this pilot study called Later Stage Assessments that will be part of Enroll Light when it's ready to launch, hopefully in a couple of years. The LSA is, the Enroll Light, the idea is that it will be adapted and more suitable for moderate to later stage assessments. It'll be lightweight, meaning it'll be short, shorter or reduced time burden, time, the visits will be shorter. It'll also be more convenient so that participants don't necessarily have to come in to the clinic. The assessments can be conducted remotely by telephone, which is exactly what this latest stage assessment study is piloting right now. It's a, it's having remote assessments by telephone and then refitted. And what we mean by refitted is that we no longer need to collect biosamples because the people that are currently enrolled have already um, donated their samples. And we don't feel that it's necessary at the later, moderate or later stages of diseases to burden participants with taking the blood samples. So if they are only participating by phone, they don't have to donate. They don't have to come into clinic to give samples. So what can you do? Make Enroll HD your study. We'd like to get as many people that are at, in the early stages of disease or that are pre-manifest or at risk to participate. It's important that people are informed, that you pass on the word, word that the sites recruit and enroll. Be a champion if you're interested in research. This is the, one of the easiest way to get involved in research without having to go through the prospect of genetic testing. So if you're interested, you can come to clinic once a year and be involved in the enroll study. And it helps familiarize people with what the assessments are, what the sites are looking for, what are the um, data points that are of interest to the research community, 
and it gets people more comfortable with what it is to participate in research. So we really would like to advocate for getting involved in observational research like ENROLL. So again, I just want to bring you back to the objectives of ENROLL. It's supporting clinical studies, it's enabling scientific research, and it's improving quality of care. We know the quality of care is very good, but these, this type of data that's collected helps the researchers and the investigators at the sites that are PIs, they're also researchers, they can look at this large data set of 18,500 participants and look at things that could potentially be improved. Like I know from my participation, quality of care is very good for my family. It, it, what we like to do is keep standardize it as much as possible around the world. And things are variable from continent to continent. So again, we'd like to see people making a difference and getting involved. These are just some nice pictures of the camp and in the right hand corner there, or at least my right hand, is the enrolled, big enrolled staff. You see some of our PIs. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the HD participants and family. This is really important. We couldn't conduct this kind of research without you. The enrolled study sites who do the work at site. HDO and the other advocacy groups that help disseminate this information and help people like you get more involved, get engaged, um, and become more comfortable with research. We want to thank the governance committees, the enrolled staff who do a lot of the day-to-day -day busy work on the back end office operations, uh, clinical operations of the study and the platform itself, and of course CHDI for supporting all of these activities. So with that, I'd just like to thank everybody and ask if anyone has any questions. You can reach through the chat or ask us by email. And of course, please visit the EnrollHD.org website to look at any of the information that I've provided in this presentation. And feel free to reach out to either myself or anyone at HDO or anyone at EnrollHD for more information. Thank you. Jamie, I have a question that's come in through social media. And they're asking, what if there isn't a study site near you? How can you still be involved? I think the best way, it, that's a really good question. And unfortunately, we can't open up and roll everywhere. But I think you can go to your local clinic. I think you can get involved and see if there's local research that's being conducted. And then eventually, with perhaps the enroll um, Self-enroll when it's up and running. You won't necessarily need to have an enroll site next to you or in your region. And we're also looking at some other new initiatives like an, um, an enroll website, enroll web. I don't, we haven't come up with a name yet, but we're looking at just a basic registry, registry that will allow people to sign up to say, I'm interested in HD research. I'm interested in being involved in research. And you don't necessarily have to have an enroll site physically near in your region, but you may be able to do more, get more involved online and through digital means. So we're working on that now, and we'll be we'll certainly roll it out through HDO. And I think we're probably about 12 months away, 12, 18 months away from doing that. But that's really the answer to your question. Okay. okay. And they can keep up to date on the website. There's a newsletter that they can subscribe to. Is that right? Um, there's an enroll newsletter that comes out once a year. We're coming out with a new um, version this summer. And then we're going to have it just annually after that. But I think a lot of the information like this type of development that we're working on, we're not really reaching out publicly yet because we need to work out all the, the crinks and make sure that it launches properly. But we'd actually be working through HDO and other patient advocacy groups to inform and keep up to date on what the progress is of whether it's the enroll web or the self-enroll. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Um, we, are, we will have this live on um, all the social media sites and our website um, by the end of this week. But if anybody's got any questions, um, feel free to reach out um, either at info.hdu.org um, or through enroll.org as well.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kat. Really appreciate this invitation, being able to present to the community. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.